as you already know from the outside cover of the bulletin, the scripture this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 4, starting verse 12, and we're going to go through verse 16. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts and minds to the message that you have for us today. For all that is good and right comes from your word. Anoint me with your Holy Spirit, enable me to preach and to teach your message and your word. For that is what we came to hear, and that is what we need to know. And without you, we can do nothing of any value. In Jesus' name, amen. The Word of God is living and active. These things in the Bible, these words of God that we read, are not some dead things that people wrote a long time ago. They are here for us, and they come alive actively when we put them to work in our lives. As we read the Bible, God teaches us how to live, what to do, how we can get through the next few hours when we feel like we're going to cry or like we're going to run away because of the things that have happened recently. And there's some scary things going on in the world. But God is with us every minute. Sometimes you plan what it is you want to study in the Bible, and there are other times that you just open the Bible and God speaks to you what he wants to speak to you from his word. It is living and active. And it's living and active in another way as well. Because you see, Jesus is the one who is the word of God. We know that from John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There are people who, who look at Jesus or hear the name Jesus and they haven't, haven't got a clue about what that means. They just figure he's some prophet somewhere who lived a long, long time ago and they don't, you know, doesn't have anything to do with their lives and they do not realize that Jesus is the one who changes our lives. When we accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, he doesn't just kind of float around somewhere. He lives in us and we live in him. He is fully God, fully man. And he enables us to do what we cannot do. So we need to put our faith and trust in him. And it is in him that we are able to serve other people as well. If you had, you know, someone who was talking at you 
day in and day out, and it was really, really hard to get a straight answer out of them. And sometimes people are like that. They like to joke or they like to um, avoid telling you exactly what it is they're supposed to say. And that can wear on you after a while. But God can give you the strength to see through different people's personalities and to know that he loves each and every one of them just as much as he loves you. And he loves you so much that he sent his own son who was there with him in the beginning to be with you and to help you to become the person that he wants you to be. And one of the things that we need to do when we're dealing with, with people who sometimes can be difficult to deal with, sometimes we can be difficult to deal with. Sometimes I can be difficult for me to deal with because I am working on something, I'm going, you need to stop and pray and read the Bible. Yeah, okay, okay, but I gotta do this first. And uh, you need to stop and pray and read, but I gotta get, you know, and it can get put off sometimes. So I, you can even get frustrated with yourself. I can get frustrated with myself because it seems sometimes it's really, really hard for me to do what God calls me to do, just as you find it hard for yourself to do what God calls you to do. But Jesus has been tempted in every way that we have been tempted and so he is able to help us at times like that. Times when maybe we should spend a long time in prayer, but at least he gets us to know what we should pray for right at that minute. And he's really good at doing that. Even when you don't know somebody else needs prayer, God can tell you. And you can put that person in prayer right away. Sometimes you don't find out for weeks afterwards that that happened. But God's word is living and active. And Jesus lives in us and can help us to do that which is good and right, even when we don't understand that that's what we should be doing. God knows. And he can speak to you through his Holy Spirit. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. I'm going to go to the book of Mark for a moment and read you something that uh, people thought was hidden from God's sight. Starting verse 1, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups and pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the, to the traditions of men. Now, how is it that Jesus was able to see through to the meaning of what they said? Because I'm sure they didn't say it the way I just said it to you. I said it with a little note of sarcasm in it that they would have had. I'm sure they would have said, why is it that your disciples do not? You know, they would have said it in an, a nice, kind voice and probably put it as an actual question to him. But Jesus was able to see through their deception into what was really going on 
in their hearts. And what they were really doing in their hearts was they were judging Jesus and they were judging his disciples by something that they had decided was important. Okay, now, I am not saying it isn't important to wash your dishes, okay? It is important to wash their dishes because as we know from different scientific things and different scientific tests, that there are lots of germs there and food spoils and it can cause us all kinds of problems. So I, I'm not saying that there aren't some good things that people teach us, but there's a difference between those things that are taught us in God's word and those things that are taught us by other people. Um, let me le read a little bit of that passage to you from Isaiah. I'm going to start at um, uh, chapter 29, verses 13 to 24 is what I'm going to read to you. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees? Who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter were, through, were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, he did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, he knows nothing? In a very short time, will not Lebanon be turned into a fertile field and the fertile field seem like a forest? In that day, the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of the gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord. The needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The ruthless will vanish. The mockers will disappear. And all who have an eye for evil will be cut down. Those who with a word make a man out to be guilty, who ensnare the defender in court, and with false testimony deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore, this is what the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, says to the house of Jacob. No longer will Jacob be ashamed. No longer will their faces grow pale. When they see among them their children, the work of my hands, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. We have lots of rules. Rules upon rules upon rules upon rules upon rules. So many of them, so many laws in our country that we don't even know what they all are. And in addition to those rules, we have the opinions of everybody else about what we should do and what we should not do. If we went around trying to follow every single one of those rules written by men, I don't think we would leave the house in the morning. In fact, it might be kind of dangerous just to be there because there's got to be something in our house that is put together the way it's not supposed to be put together, right? Those of you who ever built a house or done repairs or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. There are so many rules and laws. And some of them are genuinely good-natured and others are made up to make people do what other people want them to do, whether it's the good thing to do or the bad thing to do. How do you discern what to do? How do you discern what God wants from us? Well, it's in his word. His word is living and active. And if you want to know what is right and what is wrong, then you search the scriptures. 
That's why God gave them to us. So we didn't have to keep it all memorized. And we didn't have to guess when somebody said something, whether it was okay to do it or not. Because it's very, very clear in his word what kind of a person he wants each and every Christian to be. So trust God's word. It is living and active. It is valid for today, not just valid for a long time ago. And Jesus is alive and living in us as well as living in heaven. We have a high priest who has been tempted in every way without sin. Jesus understands what it is like to be tempted and to suffer. And since Jesus never sinned, okay, he was fully human, fully God, dealt with the same kind of trickery that the devil can give, okay, with his why questions and with his temptations to do that which is wrong or to put himself ahead of God, his Father. Jesus was able to resist those temptations. And he also suffered. He suffered for us. He suffered in the garden as he faced what was coming ahead for him. He knew it was going to be hard. He knew that he was going to be treated as if he were a criminal, when he was no criminal at all. That's one of the things from the scripture that I just read you that it talks about. It talks about people who are innocent and because of the way people can twist words are perceived as guilty. Christians, many times, especially in our society today, are beginning to look like the ones who are wrong. We're beginning to look like we're the criminals because we don't believe everything that are the rules of men because we're trusting in the word of God. Stand your ground. And when you're feeling weak, pray. And you, you can pray out loud, you can pray silently, you can pray in your head. And you can ask for the strength you need to do that which God calls you to do. Because you see, those guys out there who don't know Jesus as their Savior, they're lost. They don't know they're lost. They think everything's fine. But you know that our salvation is through Jesus Christ our Lord, the one that God sent to save us. And if you don't stand your ground, how are you gonna tell them about Jesus? How are you gonna share your faith with your friends and your enemies? Because you know what, God loves everybody. And before we came to Jesus, and even when we were fairly young Christians, and even now, we can still do some things that, that are horrible, that are awful, and we wish we didn't do them. We need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from our sins, and so does everyone else in the world. Just as we didn't deserve what God has given to us, those people that you have a hard time getting along with, need the help of God, need the help of Jesus Christ. Let us confidently approach the throne of grace and receive the mercy and grace we need. God will give us what we need to serve him. Isaiah 55 verses one through nine.
Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that you do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. Freedom salvation, all that we need are gifts from God. We need to share those gifts wherever we can, with whoever we can, because he is the only hope for humanity. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Anoint us all with your Holy Spirit. Guide us daily in all that we say and do to your honor and your glory and for the help of everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. This thing.
on me. 